enjoyed the first day of the University Future Festival, those of you who attended it. And for those who did not, as you know, today is the second and tomorrow is the third one. My name is Rasmus. I work for the Hochschule Forum Digitalisierung, but I'm not the one who will speak today. The session here right now is a very interesting one. The topic at least is super exciting. The title is why we need to agree on new measures of success for teaching in higher education. And uh, yes, thank you everyone for joining and over to the speaker. Thank you very much for the for the introduction um, and sorry for, for the last minute uh, preparation. I had some technical difficulties to fight here at home. I hope my internet connection is stable. Yeah, uh, welcome everyone. Why we need to agree on new measures of success for teaching in higher education. Um, yeah, I put a pretentious quote under there. It's basically saying, if you don't know where to where you're sailing, no wind is favorable, um, which basically means if you don't have goals, if you don't have, uh, if you don't know what success look like looks like, it's hard to know where to go and it's hard to find support for for what you're trying to do. So this is what I want to talk to about today, uh, what this means for higher education. So yeah, why do we need these measures? That should be the first question to answer, because otherwise, uh, why bother thinking and talking about this? Um, well, it starts with, if you want to improve something, if you want innovation, if you want to have innovation in a certain setting, you need to have goals. Otherwise, you never know whether something you're changing is actually an improvement or whether it's just different, but doesn't really improve what you're trying to achieve. And the same goes for innovation. Just because something is new doesn't mean it's better or doesn't mean it's helpful. So in order to figure out if an innovation is actually meaningful, if it actually has the impact you're looking for, you need to have goals. You need to know what you're trying to achieve and where you're trying to go. So when we talk about innovation in higher education and that we need more innovation and that universities should be innovative and all that, we have to have a framework for how we measure and describe success. And we need to have uh, agreed on certain goals. It's the same um, as in science. If you're doing a scientific ex experiment, if you haven't agreed on what success looks like, if you haven't agreed on a hypothesis you're trying to falsify or verify, then no experiment will help you in any way, shape, or form because you don't know what to make of it. So this is what we, why we need to talk about this. But it's not just to enable um, innovation for universities, for higher education institutions, or for edu educational institutions in general. It's also um, because for reasonable regulations, we need goal. Currently in our higher education system, the regulations we're facing as, as educators um, and as managers of higher education institutions are very much and very detailed about the how, how we are supposed to be doing things. And that leaves very little room for trying something new, for innovating, for experimenting. If we had clear goals that we would all could all agree on, then the regulations could focus on the outcome, could say, this is what we expect you to deliver. This is what we will measure in terms of quality and success. And we don't really care too much about how you're getting there. That would open much more room for innovation, much more room for experiments and free universities from these detailed regulations about how they're supposed to do things. But again, in order to be able to do so, we need to agree on what success looks like. We need to agree on what we're measuring because it is as with, if you're in a leadership position, you ideally, you don't tell other people what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. That's micromanagement. You tell them what goals they need to achieve. And then you leave it up to their creativity and to their entrepreneurial spirit to come up with ways to approach this. And the same goes for the institutions in higher education. So this is, this is why we need to have this discussion. For reasonable regulations, we need to agree on goals. And also for meaningful comparisons, we need to agree on, on what we're measuring and how, how this is important. So what we've seen, what I see when I look at international uh, comparisons of higher education rankings, I see that when it comes to research, we all agree on certain in indices and uh, ways and points and um, things to measure and to observe. 
whether or not this is a meaningful approach can, is a totally different uh, debate. But if you look at how they're measuring teaching excellence, how they're comparing universities when it comes to quality of teaching, um, it is definitely um, a hard way to do. So they're looking for, for reputation. Um, I'll, I'll go through this in a second. But if you want to have meaningful comparisons, again, you need to have agreed on something that everyone tries to achieve. Otherwise, it's comparing apples and oranges. So these are three reasons why I think we need to have this discussion um, and why I think it's a very meaningful discussion. So let's look quickly at what gets measured today. Um, today, we are measuring faculty to student ratio. That's one of the elements in higher education rankings, for example, how much faculty versus how many students. Unfortunately, that doesn't say anything about the faculty-student interactions, about the time faculty spends with students, uh, let alone how what the impact is that this that faculty uh, of this time spent together of these these interactions, whether these interactions are actually meaningful. Um, then there is a PhD to undergraduate degree ratio, where you ask how many PhDs are handed out versus how many undergraduate degrees might be interesting to look at, but I don't really get why this has an impact on the quality of the undergraduate education that someone experiences. Then there's reputation, where uh, basically a bunch of employers get asked about what they think of certain universities. And I think we can all see why this is, uh, is flawed in many ways. Uh, you never know where this reputation comes from. It, it takes a long time building up this reputation, so it doesn't really help with innovation. Um, it doesn't really help with new approaches. And it's also mostly for, for people who um, are only having a certain number of interactions with people from a university. It's based on very few numbers. So there might be some outliers. It might be more about branding, more about marketing or public relation than about the actual quality of education and teaching that's happening there. And then there's something that we all measure in higher education, and that is student satisfaction. But there's also a downside to that because um, students are satisfied when they reach the goals they think they're supposed to reach. So whatever we tell them the goals are in higher education will be their measurement of success. If we tell them that good grades and passing a module and basically in the end getting a degree is the, is the, the success we're measuring, then if students get there easily and if students get the support they need to get there, then they will be satisfied. But that again leaves the question of whether this is actually the meaningful a meaningful goal that we're trying to that we're trying to achieve. So, in order for student satisfaction to be meaningful, we need to agree with our students on the goals we're trying to achieve. And as long as we haven't done that, students will be satisfied for reasons that we don't know or that are not really um, that are not really connected to the goals we're trying to reach. And then there's the, the smaller things we're measuring. We're measuring, of course, grades and how they're developing. We're measuring the number of dropouts versus the number of graduates. All these are interesting indicators, but all this is not really a meaningful goal in itself because it's only an indicator for something else that might be happening. And especially when it comes to dropouts, most universities don't really know why people are dropping out. Um, and I would say there's a lot of bad reasons to drop out. There's a lot of good reasons to drop out. So. Again, we are measuring things, but I don't think that what we're measuring is actually what we should be in terms of the overall success we're trying to achieve in, uh, with education in higher, uh, in high, higher education. Um, yes, students um, have satisfaction goals by themselves. Yes, they do. Um, but most of the time we don't, most of the time we don't really know. So at, at Code University, I know that most of our students are on some kind of a mission, but mostly I don't know what it is. It, it's hard to track. And as long as it's something different than just um, getting the degree, um, it's hard to understand why they might be satisfied in certain situations. And I also, we also know that from educational situations, students sometimes need to be unhappy about things. They need to, um, dis, there needs to be some discomfort. Um, we, we know there's studies in education and in learning that um, learning needs some sort of um, some sort of pressure. There needs to be some sort of challenge. Um, if things are too easy, learning is not really um, learning is not really su substantial, and that is something we need uh, to take into account when we're measuring student satisfaction. So, what is success for a university student? 
I think that's a that's a meaningful discussion uh, we should be having. I don't have the answer, and I don't think there's a single answer for all the students out there. But um, it's something that we should be concerned with, and it should be something that is that we know of every individual student. What is success for them? What is it that they're trying to achieve apart from from the default option, which is graduating with uh, with a good grade? Because that's that's not enough. Um, but also, what is success for university when it comes to teaching? What should university success be measured? What, what should we compare if we want to find out which universities do it better and which universities could, could still improve? Um, how, do we, how do we identify new models that actually work versus new models that just look fancy but don't have the impact we're actually looking for? So what is success for a university in that regard? And of course, in general, what is the goal of a university education? As I said, there's there's no single answer to that. I don't, at least I don't know it. But I think we need to have this discussion, and we need to try to agree on certain certain outcome parameters that we're that we're trying to achieve and that we're trying to look at. So one thing that is kind of obvious um, is graduation. Every student, we want every student who is enrolled in a program to graduate. But I but I already mentioned um, there might be good reasons why students don't end up graduating. And just looking at the number of dropouts and say every dropout is basically a failure um, is, is not a good thing to do. Because on the one hand, we might end up supporting students up to, up to a level where they don't have a choice other than graduating, where failing is actually diff more difficult than, than, than succeeding. And, and the other thing is that what we see with, uh, with our students, at least, some of them they come up with new ideas. They come up with new goals um, while they're studying because studying is a situation, is a phase in your life where you, uh, where you get to know new people, you get exposed to new ideas, and maybe you change your plans for your, whole, for your future, for your career. Um, so dropping out of a certain study program might be a good thing because someone had the chance in the environment that the university provided to, to come up with new goals for themselves and, and define the mission they're on. So for some students, it's definitely a measure of success that they're graduating, but not graduating is not necessarily a failure. We have to look deeper um, and look, for, look at the reasons why people are graduating, why they're not graduating. And in terms of um, students being in charge of their own learning experience, I think we, we should allow for, for students to make the decision that at some point they realize that graduating is not part of their plan anymore, especially when we look at how the how the basically the, the the work world is changing, and that a lot of employers are not really keen on looking on seeing the the degree, the paper, or the degree anymore. They they rather look at what people are able to do, what their competencies are, what their goals are, and what their mindset is. So, as I said, as a, as a goal in itself, I don't think it's enough. It's still an, it's of course an important one but it's only a, a part of a set and it might be, there might be good reasons for students to have different goals. So employability is something we talk about a lot. Of course, students want to find a job because that's how they earn a living, because that's how you yeah, continue, continue in life and people who don't find a job, um, a job that pays their bills uh, are usually not considered successful. But again, it's not a good measure for success in general because in some fields, it's it's really not hard to find a job. Um, when I look at the fields, the study programs we're offering at Code University, I'm pretty sure we could do just a mediocre job uh, when it comes to educating our students and they would still find a job because software engineers, uh, product managers in digital development fields, there there's such a demand in the market that it doesn't take um, take a lot to, to help students um, be employed and, and find a job. And for other fields, it might be hugely difficult to make sure that students are uh, get a job uh, after graduating, even though uh, the university does a great job because it's a complicated field. And the worst thing, the worst thing about employability, I think, is that it's a short-term perspective. We should not just be concerned with whether or not students are able to find a job six months or 12 months after graduating. What about five or 10 or 15 years? I mean, we are facing, uh, we are facing fundamental changes with regards to, to certain jobs, with regards to company, uh, companies and business models, and with regards to whole industries. So what about our students' employability 20 years from, from now? This should also be, be our concern, and it's much harder to measure 
And, and that's why I think employability in itself is not enough as a measure of success. And then we have uh, a goal that is that for some universities is still very present, and that is educating the next generation of scientists. Um, so you want to have new scientists, younger scientists growing into their roles of, of researchers, of new professors. And that's definitely a part of the of the mission of, of universities, especially of research focused universities. But if we look at the number, it's only a small fraction of the overall number of students. So this is not a goal for the majority of students. Um, and again, that's why it could it can be a measure of success for certain groups of students and for certain universities, but generally not for, for universities in general and not for students in general. Because at least if we look at the numbers in Germany, universities have become the primary way of professional education for students. So most students do not enter the university to become scientists. They want to become something else. So measuring that can be an indicator of success for some students in some universities, but definitely not for all of them. So what about a more general, um, more general mission, preparing students for this VUCA world. Um, you may heard of the, have heard of the VUCA world. I added another thing, um, another letter. We talk about a future that's full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, and I want to add end technology. And we want students to be able to survive in this, this kind of future, to get along, to still find a job, um, earn money. Would that be enough? And I think it's certainly something um, that's a worthwhile mission, but it's hard to agree on what it takes for, you know, for, for students to be prepared for such a future. I think it's important to have in mind that this is part of the mission, definitely, but the question is, what does it actually mean? How do we get there? And, and what would it take for universities to actually prepare students for that? And in addition to that, we are facing fundamental challenges when it comes to the future of our planet, future of our society. Um, these are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals um, as they're defined by the United Nations. And they're definitely just um, a part of all the problems that we're facing and for students as challenges to take on. So I think we even need to get a step, um, take a, another step and not just prepare students for a future that's full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. But I think we need to take another step and empower our students to become something like pioneers. And as you see, I deliberately not said educate, but, but empower, because it's more than just educating, at least in the sense that we're talking about it today. Um, so pioneers, I would say, are people who are willing and able to put a dent in the universe, um, with this famous quote by Steve Jobs, to make a difference wherever they are. That doesn't mean that they need to become entrepreneurs in the sense of, of founding study programs, but that they have the confidence and the ability um, to make a difference, to, to change something, to take on challenges and to solve them. I think this would be a meaningful goal for universities that graduates see themselves as people who can make a difference, who want to make a difference, and ideally who've experienced themselves as someone who already has made a difference. So self-sustainability, self-efficacy, these experiences of, I can do something, I can change something, I can make a difference. That would be, for me, a meaningful goal. Of course, this is uh, easy to say and hard to measure. And I will just uh, quickly uh, show you how, how we think this might be broken down into certain, certain aspects, certain character traits, certain competencies. But in general, I think we need to have this kind of discussion. What does it take? And how do we observe successful development in this regard? that in the end, our graduates see themselves as people who are willing and able to put a dent in the universe. For us, uh, we've tried to break it down as something we call the pioneer's mindset. So, and it's not about, um, it's not about knowledge in the first, uh, first place. It's about how you see yourself. It's about um, genuine curiosity, that you're really curious about the world, that you really want to understand how the world works and how you can what your relationship is towards this world. And genuine curiosity also leads to, um, to asking more questions, not be satisfied with shallow answers, to dig deeper, to really 
want to find out what the foundations are of certain aspects and certain concepts you're faced with. And it also makes you curious about the people you, you encounter and you work with. So I think, and it's a great driver for, for learning, because if you're curious about something, you start learning, you want to learn more and you learn intrinsically motivated. It's not because you're forced by someone else. So I think this should be part, students should be more curious when they leave university than when they enter university. And I think this should be, uh, this should be a, a very important goal. Growth mindset um, is basically the ability to see challenges not as, um, as the risk of failing, but um, as a chance to figure out what you're able to do and what not and how to improve and how to continue to learn. See uh, failure as a chance to learn. This is, this is growth mindset, looking for challenges, not being afraid to fail, but looking for things you fail because it shows you what you can and can't do and how you can improve. Empathy and self-awareness, uh, very important that you are aware of your own strengths and weaknesses uh, because that's how you start to, to learn and grow. If you're not aware of your deficits, how would you continue to grow? If you're not aware of your strengths, how do you know wh what to focus on if you want to become better? And empathy not just makes you a nice person to be around, it allows you to become better at a lot of things, become better at teamwork, become better at leadership, at leading people, becomes better. you become better at influencing people and you come be become better at designing things because usually if you design something, you design something for a purpose, to solve a problem for someone else. If you're able to look at the world through someone else's eyes, that is very important, uh, that is a very important aspect. And then there's entrepreneurial spirit, as I just said, not in, a, in the sense of you have to found a startup, but in the sense of you see yourself as someone who want to, wants to create something, who wants to make a difference and who has the confidence to do so. And then there's critical judgment, meaning having an understanding of how the world works and being able to have a position, uh, have an opinion that allows you to, to, to yeah, come to a judgment and to act on it, always knowing that you will never be able to find the truth. So that's just one suggestion of how to look at these, uh, how to break down this goal of empowering the pioneers, um, a little bit more specific, which would allow us in a discussion to look at how could we observe something? How could we observe positive development in, in such a direction? There's also a skill set. Um, I just want to quickly look at it because I think it's uh, something you're all familiar with. People need to be able to collaborate and communicate. They need to have leadership skills. They need to be able to not just solve problems using their own creativity, but discover problems and describe them because meaningful problems tend to be fuzzy and the def defining and describing part is something sometimes harder and more important than the actual solving part. Then they need to have a learning competence. They need to have to learn how to learn. So it becomes easier for them because we all need to continue to learn and without institutions to help us uh, with, and we need technical literacy this basic understanding of technology that's all around us. So we understand what it does to us, how it influences our world and how we can use it as a tool to, to achieve the goals that we're trying to achieve. So as a start of a conversation, I, I'd love to put this out there, how, the question, how to foster a pioneer's mindset in every student? Um, because in the end, uh, as Alan Kay put it, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So if you as a student, exit university and think and see yourself as someone who has the ability to invent their own future, I think then we've all, um, yeah, achieved a meaningful goal. So how do we do that? Let's, let's, how do we measure that? How do we define that? Let's have that discussion. Um, I, I would love to hear from people what they think of this, how they look at this, and if that could be at least a path or a first step towards um, a mission for universities that we can all agree on and that we can try to work towards and then be the judge whether any innovation and when it, whether any improvement actually contributes to what we're trying to achieve here. Thank you very much. I'm afraid I haven't left a lot of time for, for questions and I, will, I haven't been able to watch the chat even I, uh, I just saw that there's a lot of things happening. So I'll read through it. Uh, if you want to have a discussion about this, please reach out to me um, via email. My contact details are on the platform. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much to the speaker. Uh, as I said in the beginning, this is a super interesting topic. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. I hope you did as well. Uh, so as you correctly pointed out, we do have a few more minutes, five to be precise. So uh, I don't know, Manuel, do you want to reply to the chat questions? 
Ooh, yes, I can at least try to do that. Uh, so where do I start? I start from the bottom, maybe. Uh, seven habits instead of mindset skills. That oh, yes, uh, beyond what Amy. Uh, I miss one aspect though, sustainability might be a critical judgment. Yes, um, that is an essential part. Um, but sustain understanding sustainability and the concept and kind of incorporating it into what you're trying to do for me is a, a result of being uh, empathetic, like seeing the world through someone else's eyes, being a critical judge of the implications of your own actions. So in a way it's part of the, it's part there because for me, it's not a character trait or a competence. It's a concept that you need to understand. And this kind of understanding um, comes from understanding how the world works, having this kind of moral compass with regards to the things you're doing. But it's very, a very important, uh, very important aspect and, and topic. This mindset, yeah, should be part of school. I, I agree. Uh, starting in universities is for for some of these things is probably late. It's not too late, but it, if we were able to start earlier with that. I think um, it would be a great thing to do. Um, There's one question and comment here, which mm -hmm. I think is very interesting. So someone pointed out on the chat that uh, when you talk about employability, that you code university might be a different situation than many others. That it's true that your graduates can very easily find jobs, but for other schools, uh, for example, well, University of Applied Science or Fachhochschulen, for them, they might be a different situation. And for them, actually employability is a very important success factor. What do you think about that? I, I agree that it's an important success factor. What I'm what I'm trying to say is that even if the university does a great job or University of Applied Sciences does a great job um, over all fields, there's still a huge difference when it comes to the employability of certain students in certain certain fields and other students in other fields. So for some students, it will always be easier because there's just a certain market demand, and for other students, it might be might be really harder. We, we've, for example, when it comes to teachers, we've seen um, teacher shortages. We've seen schools desperately reaching out to find teachers in wherever they could. And we've seen situations where teachers just couldn't find a job. Um, and it wasn't about the quality of the education that they've experienced. It's just that the market demands are changing. So it's something that, stu that universities can only influence up to a certain point. That's, that's one of the criticisms that I have. So, um, and, and the other thing is that it's a short-term success goal. So it's still important. Students need to be able to find their first job. That is something that universities need to contribute to, but it's not enough because they also need to be able to find a job five, 10, 15 years after if the world changes dramatically, if the job disappears, if the company they're working for disappears, and if they have to switch fields, learn new things. And this also needs to be part of the mission. Yeah, I already did try to talk about the um, student satisfaction. Um, student satisfaction, again, is an, is an important element, but it's not um, enough because there might be good reasons for students to be um, unsatisfied in certain situations. And again, if you don't understand the goals students have, you don't know why they're satisfied. So agreeing with students on the goals you're trying to achieve is a first step and is a prerequisite for their satisfaction to be meaningful for you as a quality indicator, I think. Otherwise, if you say students are just satisfied, satisfied if they pass a module, then it, it's really easy to make sure they're satisfied, make it as easy as possible for them to pass. But I think we can all agree that that's not a good way to approach this. Okay, there's less than one minute left. So maybe this is a good time to close it uh, off. So thank you very much to Manuel. Thank, for, thank you very much to all the participants. It's very nice to see the lively discussion in the chat. I'm happy that you're all interested. Uh, just a small reminder that uh, the University Future Festival continues throughout today and also tomorrow. So there are many other sessions to sign up for if you're interested. So with those words, thank you again and have a nice day and bye-bye. Thank you very much.